Uh, hello, welcome everybody. Welcome to um, session three of Spanish Wine Day, 9th of June, 2020. Um, this particular session is uh, interesting because we have uh, uh, delighted to have the, the Dio uh, Cava with us. And uh, we've got uh, Yvonne Heisterman, uh, who's um, joining us to talk about um, specifically uh, um, Cava de Paraje. Um, so you may want to um, try and say that. Uh, and uh, when, when you see it in, in the written form. So delighted to, to have you uh, with us, Yvonne. Uh, where, where are you uh, at the moment today? Um, I'm in the southern part of Germany. At the moment, it's still raining, but it's very necessary here. <laughs> okay, good. Well, it's a fine sunny day, as usual, here in the Penedes wine region yeah. we're broadcasting from. So, y Yvonne, I'm going to pass you straight over to, um, uh, in name of the denominate designation of origin, Cava, uh, to tell us about, um, about the rules and regulations and specifically the uh, Cava de Paraje. Yeah, thanks a lot, Anthony. Yes, uh, hello, welcome to everybody. I'm very glad to speak to you a little bit uh, about Cava. This time's not alive, but uh, I'm sure the next time at Pro Wine Air uh, or wherever at Cava region, we will meet us. Uh, first, a little bit of history. You know, of course, uh, Cava is uh, very famous since the end of the 19th century. It was at 1872 that Josep Braventos produced the first cava in San Sardoni de Anoya. This is the old heart of the uh, cava region, the real center, and I would recommend to you to visit it once if the border uh, opens uh, again. Now, um, Josep Braventos uh, is the former of Codonu, and Codonu at the moment is uh, uh, second biggest producer uh, for Cava. Uh, the biggest one uh, you know, of course, is Fregenet, which was founded in 1914. Um, yeah, but um, also you should know um, the time as Cava begins was a little bit difficult because uh, just a few years later uh, we had at the end of the 19th century also the phylloxera and uh, after this uh, the region changed completely. Why? We had a lot of um, red varieties because uh, there were also producers um, for red wine which was exported to French but it completely changed. Um, and they decided uh, to give more attention to the white varieties. And if you speak about Cava, so we have 81% with the traditional grape varieties, you know, Charello, or also the synonym is um, Panza Blanca, um, is responsible for the body of the cava. Macabeo, also famous as Viura, uh, gives aromas of fruits like apple and uh, yeah, it's very complex as well. And Pariada um, stands for the elegance and for the acidity. Yeah, this um, um, three grapes, I told you, made about 81% of the area, but uh, also you should know how big is the area. The area in total is uh, uh, 38,000 uh, hectares, and uh, they produce every year more or less 200, uh, near 250,000 bottles of cava. And very interesting is that the uh, export is also very high, uh, of course, to the uh, European community. Um, and we have a, an export of 165 million bottles. That's really interesting, um, I think. But I will return um, to the grapes at first. Um, it's also allowed, uh, for example, to plant Chardonnay and uh, Pinot Noir, the famous uh, sparkling, uh, um, the famous grape varieties for sparkling ones. 
uh, which are complemented by traditional varieties like Garnacha, Trepat, and uh, Monastrel. The red varieties, of course, are um, very important for the Cava Rosado, which represents at the moment 9% um, of the total production. Um, Cava, you know, is a word for seller. And um, yeah, I have to go to other slides since I don't forget. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and uh, at first, the word Cava appearance was in 1959, and um, it is used since 1970 um, for the Cava region. And 1970 was also important because it was a year of the foundation of the DO. And um, yeah, this was, uh, of course, 1986 um, defined in the EU regula uh, regulatories. At the next slide, um, you will see uh, the karma is delimited in 160 municipalities, um, also not only in uh, Penedes, also in Aragon, uh, Valencia, or Bioja, but more or less 90% uh, are produced in the Penedes region and uh, yeah, Catalonia. And um, if you have any question, we can uh, discuss it after the presentation. Um, yeah, also important, I think it's um, for the Kaaba is uh, that you have different styles and types. Um, here you see the, uh, uh, the relation to the sugar. And uh, the most important is uh, up to now Kaaba Brut uh, is more or less 48%. Um, and if you look at the next slide, uh, you see the types of kava in relation to uh, the aging. And uh, this is really important. Um, you have the traditional method. I think it's very common to you. Uh, traditional kava has to lie on the lease for nine months. There's ever 15 and Gran Reserva 30 months at minimum. You can do it longer, but which uh, many producers uh, using. So as also for Cava de Parache Calificado, uh, the new uh, classification with the minimum of 36 months. I think it's uh, very important for the Cava to wipe uh, more longer. Um, so they can keep such producers uh, on the lease up to 10 years or more. It's incredible. But this long process of lying on the lease gives uh, more structure and complexity and makes the pelage uh, finer. And you also can keep it uh, longer in your cellar. Yeah, cover the parache. Uh, I have very good memories on this. Uh, it was licensed in June uh, 2016, and I had the honor to be there for the official presentation uh, in uh, Barcelona, and it was full of uh, emotion. And uh, I think um, with this new classification, Cava is on the best way to the top of uh, Europe's sparkling wines. Uh, this quality classification stands um, for high quality um, of Kaba. That means uh, in the quality pyramid, it is the top of Reserva and Gran Reserva, not only because of the agent. Um, there are some difficulties. The main difference is that Kaba uh, de Parache Calificado is only allowed to be produced from own grapes from a small Pacific area. So soil and microclimate uh, shape the unique character. And yeah, interesting is that especially in this premium segment, the Brut Natures uh, and Extra Brut 
Um, that means cabas with less than three or six gram of sugar get more and more significance. In my opinion, uh, these are cabas uh, without makeup uh, because they don't cover up uh, their taste uh, with sugar. Like that, you can uh, taste the, really the winemaker's expression and get the philosophy of the winery, the style of the house, and also the minerality is more and more uh, stronger to remark. Um, yeah, um, we have it here on the slides um, that also the production yield per hectare is limited, manual harvesting, the vineyards are more than 10 years old, and also, of course, uh, controlled. Limited um, yield per hectare, 48 uh, hectoliters only. So you have really a good concentration in the juice. Um, yeah, I uh, just uh, spoke to the uh, aging, and I think uh, you uh, can read this, uh, and maybe I can speak a little bit over the six companies. Um, Cava de Paraje Calificado at the moment with eight qualified Parajes. Um, yeah, Agricola Canzala is very traditional. It's the homage to the beginning in 1914, as the two families, Ferrer and uh, Zala, founded Fregenet. Um, this uh, cava you should really taste, it's biodynamic style with long aging, uh, more or less 96 months on the lease. And uh, as grapes are used, Pareada and uh, Charello. It's a really very, very strong, but uh, also elegant uh, cover, um, which has this own style. But all of them, maybe Alta Alela, it's not so well known <laughs> um, here in Germany. It's uh, yeah, um, very, very high. Um, in, in quality, but uh, only really Cava lovers uh, know them. Alta Leila um, is in the heart of Aragon, it's um, in the north from Barcelona and was a family project from the 90s. They started in 91 with only six hectares and uh, even uh, grow more and more. And interesting is that the Cava de Paraja is located in the Marina National Park between Alea and Tirana, only 12 kilometers from the sea. They are using Chardonnay and Panza Blanca. Panza Blanca, you remember, it's uh, Charello. And here also we have sandy soils. Uh, and it's really an own style such as Cordonu, our third one. You remember the second biggest producer, Cordonu, uh, has um, in total three Cava de Parajas. Uh, for example, uh, Tros Nu is from uh, Pinot Noir, Cava uh, La Pleta, very, very mineralic, and La Fiduera, I would say, uh, more, more strong. Um, and um, very interesting is that the production is very limited from some cameras they only have a few hundred uh, bottles. Yeah, who it comes? I think uh, you know it's among the top five cava producers. Um, this one, La Capella, was one of the first and uh, yeah, they use 100% uh, Charello with 108 months on lease, 108 months, correct. It's, it's crazy and it's so fine from the perlage and I think uh, it's really a good taste, very creamy in uh, mouth. Um, yeah, I think, um, yeah, that's a pity that we are not here live to taste it together, but uh, you should do it as well as the next one, Paraventura Canvas, 
founded in 1982 in the heart of San Sadorni de Anoia, 30 kilometers to Barcelona, 450 meters above sea level. And uh, here you have alluvial lime salts. And that's also very interesting that if we uh, will have the eight Cava de Parajas, uh, we will note really the own stylistic at each one. And um, it's, yeah, not, not difficult uh, to taste it blind and to do it again and find uh, really uh, the, the stylistic. Yeah, Vince and Sepp, uh, here in Germany, it's also not so well known, but um, at the moment, the Cava de Parache gets more, um, more interest. And this is interesting, he, they use uh, three grapes, Cervello, Maccabeo, Pareada, and are situated in the heart at uh, Penedes. Uh, young, since uh, 2006, they produce a uh, biodynamic style. The word Claror uh, is a synonym for purity. Uh, that means also a little bit the essence uh, of Kava. And yeah, if you would like to ask how great is a uh, parache, um, it depends. You have paraches um, which are only 1.5 hectare up to up to 6 hectare. Um, yeah, you should uh, discover it. It's, it's really interesting. Um, here you have the bottles and uh, I think an most of uh, the European counties there um, to buy. Yeah, I think this uh, picture speaks uh, for itself, uh, an old seller. The next one, yeah, uh, maybe you ask um, yourself how it is possible to make such elegant sparkling wines with moderate alcohol. And you can see it in this or the following chart. Uh, yeah, a little bit crazy, but you see um, the vines are very close to each other. That means that the roosts are forced uh, to dig deeper into the soil. This is important for the mineralic structure and, of course, to get water. Otherwise, the plants stretch towards uh, the sun. And the third thing is that the harvest is quite early to maintain the acidity and to have not too much sugar, which is responsible for the alcohol. And yeah, with this impression, yeah, you get uh, the idea to go very, very soon to Kara region. And yeah, you have uh, Finca or this, uh, for example, um, is uh, Parache. Yeah, I hope um, you uh, had something uh, new um, ideas, uh, which is Kava and of course Kava de Parache. And uh, in my opinion, it's one of the most interesting uh, sparkling wines in the world with its own structure. And I would never uh, compare with other covers because own style, own grape varieties. And yeah, this is really unique. And um, at least uh, you get really a good relation between uh, price and enjoy drinking um, with cava uh, and cava de parache. Yeah, do you have questions? <laughs> Yeah, so uh, that's very interesting. We have a couple of questions, both from Ken, uh, with, uh, says, um, with 52 communities producing cava, it appears that uh, Valencia is an important source of cava. Is that true? Uh, Valencia, you see, uh, has a small uh, production, but uh, we, we should uh, keep it in mind, um, also in Rioja, for example, that there exist a producer who really produce very fine uh, covers with their own style. All right. Um, actually, I think it means Utiel Requena is the, um, the cover 
area, the 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 municipio is uh, Requena that's making the cover. I don't know if there is cover from Valencia. Maybe uh, Adriana could um, type in an answer to that one. I think she's listening in. Uh, Ken also is asking, with many top producers leaving Cava for Corpinet, what is the future for Cava Paraje? Will this yeah. create an outside the Penedes or the rest of Spain? Yes, it's interesting. Yes. Uh, we know um, that uh, the world of wines every time is in changing. Uh, and Corpinet, it's uh, a different um, thinking. And um, yeah, we will see what uh, the future, uh, what makes about it. Uh, we have many parallels uh, between them. We see parcel or with a limited production. But um, yeah, I think it's too early to, to value it. Uh, and we will see what happens. Uh, sorry that I can give a correct uh, answer, but uh, yeah, I'm not a fortune teller. And I think uh, our theme now cover the paraffa and not uh, copy not with, with, which is a different organization, but also with very good producers, of course. Okay, there's um, in, in the slides that uh, <clears throat> somebody um, said privately that uh, the Cava de Paraje was only for Brut style. Does that mean you can't get Brut Nature Cava Paraje? Ah, uh, up, uh, sorry, up to Brut style. So uh, you have Extra Brut and Brut Nature and a lot of the top Cava de Paraje son uh, uh, Brut Nature. But it's not allowed to produce Cava de Paraja with uh, more sugar than uh, 12 gram per liter. I see. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Um, so if you have any questions, uh, now's the time to post them. Uh, while, while you're thinking of one or two, that I would say that Cansala we had on the Spanish Wine Week um, in May with uh, Jose Maria, I think, who presented his... Um, the Cansala, it's just um, 10 years, I think you said, aging, roundabout, yes? Yeah, yeah it's uh, crazy, really. But uh, I love uh, this cover very much. All of the parajas, uh, but also I like the basic of cava. You can have a lot of covers, uh, um, only um, brewed with the aging of nine uh, up to 12 months, which are very typically and uh, what i like uh, is also that cover is um, sparkling for the gastronomy um, with less of alcohol full of minerality and his own style that means also yeah you can drink a glass more okay and uh, is is um, for, for export markets the mm -hmm. is it aim in english for cava de paraje instead of Cava de Paraje, is there an English translation? Um, I would say maybe uh, Cava de Parcel, also in Germany, maybe there are some uh, German uh, here, um, Lagen Cava, it's or Krü, Krü for um, okay. a designated area, I think Parcel, uh, you are better in English than me, maybe you can oh. help me. <laughs> Crew cover sounds good. <laughs> cover, estate cover, maybe. Yeah, or estate cover, yeah. yeah. But not only the estate, because it's important that it's really a, a restricted area, a small parcel, uh, which is not very big. And you can have, for example, a winery with 400 hectares and the parafe is only five or two hectares. I see. I didn't know that. So it has to be a. Um, what's the maximum size of the um, paraje? Do you know? Oh, I should. Uh, I should uh, ask Ariadna. Um, in my mind, um, I think uh, it depends from the from the border of the of the parcel. Um, right. Okay. There's a question uh, from Joe. Uh, with cava being produced in so many places in Spain, in what sense does it have a region? 
um, as a region. Um, for example, um, you have uh, different grape varieties um, which uh, are used uh, and only uh, the climate and the different soil makes in every region uh, his own style. I think uh, at Penedis region, for example, they are very elegant and um, for example, Conca de Barbara, uh, you are using also a lot of Pinot Noir. Uh, so you have a little bit more body or Rioja, I think, in uh, Viura. Okay, so I think it was, it's, what he was driving at is that is, is a, a cava from, say, I don't know, Extremadura, um, different from a cava in, say, um, Benedis. Uh, do they have different identities or the, all this, as they all using? A, a range of different nine or ten grape varieties at the same um, sense of place. Um, yeah, this, this is um, a difficult question uh, to say. I uh, think um, the Cava from Extremadura, you have a climate which is a little bit hotter. Um, you have uh, more the creamy acidity. Uh, they are very uh, smooth. I see. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, we'll put last question then. Last question uh, from Sri Lanka, would you believe? Why was oh, yeah. the. Yeah, I actually put some glasses on. Uh -huh. Why was the Dio Cava created? Or the, 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 the Cava de Paraje, why did they create it? Or why, why yes, why, why um, mm -hmm. how come they came up with. Um, in, um, yeah, in 2016, I uh, spoke to a lot of uh, producers and uh, yeah, uh, it was very interesting and uh, um, the majority told me that it was important uh, to create a new classification which is on the top and also, and I think it's important to create a high classification which is completely different from other sparklings in the world. It's completely different to Champagne, completely different to French Quarter, And uh, it's very, very uh, clear and very easy to understand. Uh, and uh, also with all the topics, um, I think they are on a good way to be uh, the high class caras and one of the top in the world of uh, best sparkling wines. Okay, good. Well, thank you, um, Yvonne, for the uh, presentation. On, on thank the... you, Anthony, and yeah, thanks a lot to you all for for being here in the webinar room. And of course, thank you to the DL Cava for um, supporting the event with the uh, presentation. I actually got a, a little present from uh, the the cover, in the form of a file. Um, here we go, which you're welcome to uh, quickly download and uh, take away and um, and swat up um, all everything about uh, Cava. So, thank you, Yvonne. We're, we're going to uh, end this session now, but we're not going to go away because uh, we do have a, a Cava producer uh, with us uh, who's going to. Um, um, Tell us a little bit more about um, uh, um, Cava in general. So, Yvonne, thank you very much. We'll thank stay. you. Cheerio. Bye. And hello. Bye -bye.